In its most basic form, music could be described as an idea turned into a sound. But ask yourself this, what is it that makes you go back and listen to the same piece of music over and over again? Gather into large groups to create music together. What is it about music that makes some people just want to jump up and dance? So music is more than just ideas and sound. It evokes emotions, it creates memories, it can inspire us and it can reflect our culture. But at its core, music is about creativity, connecting inspiration to innovation. For example, in the 1700s, an Italian man was sick of the sound of his harpsichord that would only play loud. He wanted a more subtle instrument. After much trial and error, he did succeed in creating a beautiful instrument that was able to play both soft and loud. And so rather unimaginatively, he called it the soft loud, the piano forte. Back even further to 1000 AD, and Mr. Guido de Rezzo was frustrated that his choristers kept forgetting their music. Having them learn it by memory was proving to be a time waster. So he came up with a system called the washing line system, where notes hung on lines like washing. Little did he know that his system would be developed and grow to become the universal language that we know today as music notation. So maybe you're a composer who can create amazing compositions out of a simple idea. Maybe you're a chorister who wants to understand the music better. Let me help you to understand this amazing language called music notation. The process of learning to read music is very similar to any other language that you've ever had to learn. When you were a child, people read to you. You enjoyed their stories. The stories had plot lines, areas of tension. Music is the same. And learning to move from listening and verbalizing your stories to being able to write and create and read yourself is a language skill. So let's talk about what that language involves. And you'll begin to... When Guido de Rezzo invented his washing line system, he had to include lots of elements that needed to be expressed in music notation. Today we talk about the elements of music in six broad categories. Number one is melody. And that is a consideration of how high and low notes can go, up and down. Think of it in broad concepts. Secondly, harmony combining those pitches to make pleasant sounds in the ear. Third, form. What structure does your story or song take? Does it have verse and chorus? Does it have just a continuous line of sound? Number four is dynamics. How loud or soft something is. A soft voice draws people in. These are all tactics used in music as well. Number five, tempo. Tempo is another word for speed. How many beats per minute does this music travel along it? And the last one, number six, rhythm. If you write the word rhythm out, each of the letters spells rhythm has your two hips moving. So there's our six elements. We're going to focus on the basics of how music notation is laid out. You'll see behind me five lines. Starting at the bottom, they're even color coded. And as we go along, you'll figure out why that is. You'll also see a symbol over here. This funny squiggle is called the treble clef. This clef tells us that the notes that we write on these lines are likely to be higher notes played by higher instrument or higher voice like recorder. Music takes the form of five lines, sometimes even more. Piano players work on a double 
five line system with the bass clef at the bottom and the treble clef at the top played simultaneously. So very broadly, if a note is placed on the bottommost line, it's a lower note. And as you go up in pitch through the stave, your notes get higher. And these five lines, as I have said, is called a stave or a staff. And this little sign at the end, this is called the G clef. And that sets everything in place for me. When people see this clef, they know what to call these lines, because each of these lines now has a name. But they know that where the clef starts, that line through there is called G. And this is known as the G clef, because originally it was a G. So you'll notice that line's green. So if I put something on that line, I would know to call that thing sitting on that line, that bit of washing, a G. Let me show you. Let's pretend this little, unassuming little bottle cap represents a sound, any old sound, whether it's on a recorder, a piano, your voice, whatever. Let's just pretend though that it's just a short, sharp sound for today. If I put that little bottle cap right there on that little line, I am telling you in music code or music notation that I want you to make that sound, make the sound G on whatever instrument you have. So in earlier videos we learned the recorder and that would be thumb and three fingers. On the piano, the fifth note up from middle C, G. And I only want one, there's only one there, but I'm telling you I want a G note. And we know that because we know that anything placed on this line tells me in music code to play a G. That line is called G. And Guido de Rezo, he designed this. So now if I take my little bottle cap and I take it up, my pitch will get higher. Yes. So instead of being a G, suddenly if I take it up, da, 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 da. I'm nowhere near the right pitch, but you get the idea. Da, 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 da. And I... G. Recorder. G. One G. If I add two more notes, in line with that note, G, that's called harmony. You're telling me to play those three notes at the same time, not like this one after the other, you're telling me to play those at the same time. Well, I can't do that on the recorder. I could on the guitar, the keyboard, any of those instruments that have the opportunity to play multiple notes. But if I spread them out like this, as my eye travels along, just like in reading, so I will play. Notice it's going up in pitch as well. G, B, D, that line is called D. It's going up. What if I reverse that? Started with the high note, then the B note, then the G note. It would sound like this. you can see that pitch is about the position on the stave. 
The last point I want to make for today, because we've covered a lot of information, which I will continue in the next video, is the fact that I've mainly talked about the lines of the stave today. Just the lines. And these lines, each line has a name. As I said, G, green, blue, B. Uh, I didn't have the appropriate ribbon colors for the rest of them, but they are E, G, B, D, F, E, G, B, D, F. And we always start at the bottom when we note, name our lines. And there's a great little poem that goes along with this. Every good boy deserves fruit. I hope that was clear for you today. I'm gonna to continue on with the spaces in the staves in my next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. See you next time. Yay.